Today I'm going to be presenting a dimmer circuit with a triac. Solid state semiconductor that works very much like a relay and is used on alternating current. So anything which is mains powered, then they can switch much, much faster when compared to a relay. So we can control loads much more precisely than we will be able to with a relay. This is used, for example, as a light dimmer, where you don't really want to see the light flickering. So this is the device I've got in here. Just to make things a little bit easier, here's an image. And this is how it looks like. So basically it has one triac, which is the BTA16800. So this is a very basic four quadrant triac, nothing special in there. And here we have a schematic. So the way this works is normally with the supply, you have the, the phase and the neutral, right? In here, this circuit doesn't require a neutral. It works in series with the supply. So what that means is the neutral passes right through. So it's not referenced, it's not used for anything on this part. In fact, I have a demo in here I'll show you in a second. And then the phase is these two terminals. So the first thing we have in here is the snubber circuit. The snubber circuit is composed is, uh, of one resistor and one capacitor. As this is a four quadrant triac, it doesn't have the best immunity against false, false triggering. Therefore, we use this circuit. If we were to use a three quadrant triac, which has higher immunity, then we could completely omit these two components. The way this works is when the mains is applied for the first time, so this triac is in open circuit. So the current will flow through this set of resistors, so the potentiometer, the fixed resistor and the resistor here, and it will start charging this capacitor. Voltage will start to increase over time. When it gets to about 30 volts, this diac in here, this device, it breaks down. And all of a sudden, all of the charge which is stored on this capacitor flows through this resistor and through the diac and he engages the triac gate. Triac is in conduction, there's no longer any current flowing here. So this circuit is basically bypassed. At this stage, it doesn't really require any current until he opens again, because the device will stay latched. If the device for some reason doesn't stay latched, then this circuit is again energized and it will start charging this capacitor. All that this potentiometer in here does is it essentially regulates the amount of current that charges this capacitor and therefore we can charge it faster or slower. Second uh, potentiometer, it's only here to limit the inrush current. What that means is when this potentiometer is completely bypassed, we don't want a short circuit going into the triac gate. R1 serves to limit the current, the inrush current going from the main capacitor through the diac and into the triac gate. With this resistor in here, the pulse is a bit longer and uh, not so sharp, which helps ensure that the triac is fully triggered. Now let's see how this works in practice. So in here I have an assembled circuit. And I'm going to plug this circuit. And we can see the bulb comes on with various amounts of brightness. From very low to fully on. So let's see what's happening in here. I have now attached the oscilloscope probe to the lamp. And we're going to see the waveforms that are sent to the bulb. So we can see that at this moment I'm operating on maximum duty cycle and we can see that the majority of the waveform as it comes from the supply goes straight into the bulb. So we have a little bit of a discontinuity in there which if we go back into this circuit then we can see that this discontinuity is basically the time that it takes to charge this capacitor, enable this diac, which is roughly 30 volts, to then control the gate. It reaches about 35 volts. 
that is the reason that I have a discontinuity in here, even operating at full duty cycle. Now what's going to happen is that as I reduce the brightness of the bulb, the triac will start to be engaged later. So if we refer back to the original circuit, what's going to happen is that I'm changing the value of this resistor so that now it takes longer to charge this capacitor. As it takes longer, then the triggering of the triac occurs later on the cycle, and therefore the lamp is less bright. We can see in here that the lamp is very dim. And when we get to a certain point, it completely goes off. Now let's for a second investigate what's happening in here in the triggering circuit. Let's focus now on the, on the timing capacitor. So when the triac is not conducting, the current goes all the way through this set of resistors and it will charge this capacitor. Let's call it capacitor 1. This means that the voltage in this capacitor steadily rises all the way up to 30 volts or so, which is the breakdown voltage of the diac. And then once the diac breaks down, we're expecting to see a very sharp decline on the voltage as the current flows through the triac gate. So let's see how this happens in practice. In here we see that we have the circuit powered, the bulb is off. The voltage across the main capacitor is roughly 22 volts. This is too low for the diac to break down and engage the triac. As I continue to increase, the voltage across the capacitor also increases. And we're about just under the breakdown voltage. Now look what's going to happen when I, when I continue to increase. All of a sudden, you see that the voltage across the capacitor reaches 30 volts and then it falls down to about 12 volts. This is the holding current of the diac. So the diac, just like a triac, has a holding current. And when it reaches below a certain value, it just stops conducting. As I was, we can see in here, it just the voltage more or less stays stable until the point where the cycle reverses, the polarity of the mains inverts, and it starts charging the capacitor on the inverse polarity. The green plot is the gate voltage. So you can see in here that at the moment when the capacitor is first discharged into the gate, we have a higher voltage. So in here, we can see that we have about 2 volts peak going into the gate. As I increase the duty cycle, the current across the diac will increase. And therefore we can start to see that the diac fully discharges very quickly. We can still continue to see the peak that is generated at the moment the capacitor discharges into the gate. We can also see that the gate works in a certain way as a kind of a square wave oscillator. Now look at this. When it's conducting, we can see that the gate is fairly positive. This is used by some microcontrollers to detect when the triac is in conduction. This square wave, although not perfect, is very useful to detect when the triac is in conduction or not. Notice how I can even measure the duty cycle. With a 50% duty cycle, I only measure the gate voltage during that period, so I know exactly for how long my triac is conducting.
Now, why do triac dimmers are not supposed to be used with LED bulbs and why do they make them flicker? Let's find out. Now, let's see what happens if we try an LED bulb replacing the halogen bulb and let's see how the waveforms are going to be different. Notice at this point, the voltage is not high enough to trigger the diac. In a few occasions you can see the needs triggered in here. There's a pulse going on. The light is still off. As I increase the duty cycle, we can see that the triac starts conducting. But look what happens in here. Since the current is not high enough to keep the triac conducting, so the current is lower than the holding current, the triac will go out of conduction. At this point, the current will flow through the circuit again and it will re-trigger it. So we can see that on the same half cycle, we have the triac being re-triggered twice. This generates a number of harmonics and high frequency noise. It also makes a substantial flicker on the bulb. If we continue, we can see that the triac is triggered even more. Now three times. And four. And five. It's causing the triac to constantly pop on and off out of conduction. This is because the holding current of the triac it's higher than the current in the bulb is trying to absorb at that time. So the triac will go off conduction. And then if you remember here, the current will again flow through the timing circuit. So the timing circuit will again re-trigger the triac. And it can be re-triggered several times in one cycle. Now this high frequency creates harmonics and noise, and it will make the bulb flicker.